Hello and welcome, my name is Duda Machine. Thank you for joining me. Today we are going to be checking out Mako Fun. Stick around. So the kind folks over at Mako Fun reached out to me and I guess you could call this maybe my first sponsored video. Uh, I don't know. Uh, they, uh, they offered me a little uh, incentive to uh, check out their online software and it actually seems pretty cool. It's sort of a, a simple web app to create mock-ups and you know like with clip art and text and, and, and easy manipulations it looks very very user friendly but there's this section where you can create um, artwork with basic shapes, sort of the way you would in something like uh, Adobe Illustrator, you can build illustrations out of basic shapes rather than just using pen tools and brush tools and stuff like that. You can, you know, lots of people work this way where they create illustrations just using circles and squares and triangles and lines and, and simple stuff like that. So that's kind of the goal today. We're going to dive in and uh, check out this mock of one and see what it's all about. Okay, here we are, mockofun.com, and we are going to create an illustration I go into create. Okay, so let's go to new file. Ah, okay, all these different sizes. You can set a custom size. Let's make an Instagram post. Okay, so my idea with this one, let's just make a space scene. We're gonna make a rock chip, a, a night sky, space background, and maybe a planet. So over here in elements, this is where you add things to the artboard. And I guess shapes is where you'll find the kind of basic geometric things. Geometric. Ah, perfect. Yeah, that's what I want. I want basic circles and squares, lines, triangles, that kind of thing. All right, so I want this to fill the entire page and we're going to change the color. So right up here, I suppose, there it is. Nice dark bluish, grayish color-ish. <laughs> and let's add some extra objects as a little bit of variation in the background. So what I'm going to do is I want to apply this color to this object. And there's this copy styles section. So if I copy the style of this one, can I apply it? It's the, there it is, yeah. So now I can go in and just change the color slightly. And I copy and paste with the keyboard? I can, oh, that's such a time saver. That's so annoying when programs don't use the default keys for their things. Okay, if I hold shift, it'll scale it in a non-uniform way. That's not what I want right now, but it's good to know. Okay, we're going to call that good enough for our back. So what I want to do is I don't want these as individual objects. So I think I can group them right up here. If I select them all, group, there we go. Yes, and in the layers, they're treated as one object. All right, cool. So let's make a planet. How are we going to do this? Okay, so here is our planet shape. And let's give it a fill. We want it to look kind of... Hmm. How am I gonna draw inside this? I know I can put stuff on top. I wonder if this texture, what's in here? Oh, okay. Oh, I bet you can make your own textures too. That's interesting. Maybe I'll just choose a texture they already have just to kind of keep this simple. I don't want to spend forever on this planet. Let's go with, uh, what does this look like? Yeah, I like that texture. Oh yeah, that's that's sort of planet-y. <laughs> I like that. Okay, good enough. All right, we uh, want the planet to be kind of smaller. And uh, yeah, you can edit the texture after you have it. That's useful. Okay, so now let's add an actual shadow to the uh, to the side of the planet. I bet they have a wedge shape that would be good for that. Lots and lots of shapes. Oh my gosh. Okay, here this one's perfect. Yeah. You can rotate by grabbing this little little dongle on the side there. You hold Alt when you're uh, resizing it on the edge. It'll do it in a non-uniform manner. And it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, close enough. And let's uh, change the opacity of this one. Yeah, there you go. Kind of not too dark. Good. And let's uh, make a copy of this. Oops. Oh, I wonder if we can lock that layer so we don't accidentally select that. We can. Useful. Okay, good. So we're going to make a copy of this, and this will be the highlight. So we want a shadow and a highlight on this planet. This is very quick, very easy. Don't need to spend a lot of time baffing about with programs figuring out how they work. You just need a quick little clip art of some sort. Seems like the perfect tool for that. Okay, so let's group these. Can we actually add the drop shadow here? Oh, that's useful. Is that an actual drop shadow? Is that applying a shadow? I can't see. Hmm, I wonder if it's because I have it grouped. I wonder if I should do it before I group it. Let's ungroup it and apply a shadow just to this shape. I wonder if that'll work. Oh, there, the shadow is there. It's, it was just off to the side, okay. Ah, there we go, okay, we got the shadow going. 
Good, we want this to look a little, a little collage-y, a little 3D. Now we'll group these. Perfect. Actually, not quite perfect. This highlight's too bright. There we go. Okay, so we have our planet as one object. We can put that wherever we want, and let's get it started on a rocket ship. It's gonna need a square for its body, and let's uh, give it a bit of a rounded feature on the bottom. And then it's also gonna need a triangle as like a nose cone. We'll give that a uh, rounded bottom as well. Okay, so let's um, use our non-uniform scaling and we'll just bump it. Oh, that's useful. If you hold Alt on the keyboard, you can zoom in. And space on the keyboard is your little hand tool to move the canvas. Very, very intuitive. You can use the keyboard to fine tune your objects. Copy this one. And once you get used to a program like this, it becomes so easy, so quick. We don't want to select our planet. We just want to group these two. And got those and group. Okay, so our nose cone will be a darker kind of bluish color, I think. Oh, right now we're editing both colors. Hmm, okay, well that's okay. I think we can, maybe I should just ungroup them and I can do them one at a time. Change the color, maybe a greenish blue. That Yeah, that, that matches nicely to the background. And we're gonna copy that style and paste it onto the bottom. Now we will group it actually. Maybe I should add a little bit more detail to that. Let's do this, look. Let's take this little guy, add some like kind of stripes almost to the nose cone. Or maybe a little lighter. Yeah, let's make them light. I wonder if there's a way to mask objects. There probably is. I don't wanna take all day on this. So I'm gonna play around with this some more after I'm done this and figure out all the, all the minutia. Probably easier ways to do lots of this stuff that I just don't understand yet. Very easy to use program though, from what I can tell. Group that, okay, so that's our nose cone and this will be our base. This base, let's make it a, let's make it a gray, mediumish gray, maybe a lightish gray. There we go. Okay, so before we group this, let's add on some details to this guy too. Oh, okay, this is useful. It keeps the last selected uh, colors that you had right here. So there. You don't even need to faff about with uh, copying styles or anything like that. Some little screw holes or rivets into the side here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, let's put a window into this. Yeah, a little window, a little astronaut viewing window. Should we put an astronaut in it? Ah, that way, that's a whole nother illustration right there. When you get into adding a character to a scene, it's like, you're actually making two illustrations, if you think about it. Now, we'll just make this a nice little window. We can uh, do a good job on the window, though. Let's add that same wedge and a little highlight on the window as well. And make it lighter. Here we go, just like that. That is our base. Okay, now we need some sort of, uh, some sort of flaps at the bottom and some fire coming out the bottom as well. What would make a good flap? Oh, boom. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted. Perfect, perfect. Rocket ship flaps at the back. Every rocket ship has to have those little go faster flaps. That's what I call. Oh, okay. You can send it uh, back and forth in the stack just by using these tools right here. That's useful. Flip this and keep it wonky on purpose. We don't want this to look too uniform. Okay, so let's add some fire to the bottom of this. What can we use for fire? Maybe we should group this one first, actually. So let's group this. Yeah, we should have three objects. We do. Background, middle ground, foreground. Perfect. Okay, so we need to create something that will be a good fire. I wonder if they have a fire shape. I bet they do, but they have a fire already made. We're not gonna cheat though. We're gonna use some shapes here, make some fire. Ooh, oh, okay. Got some little weird shapes already made for us. Yeah, let's use this one. This one's perfect. Okay, so how are we gonna add this as fire? We want red, orange fire maybe? Let's make our fire over here, then we'll move it over there. So this one is a perfect fire shape. Good, and maybe we should add like a lighter color in the middle. Yeah, there we go. That's what I wanted. We're cobbling together an illustration out of these random shapes. I like it though. All right, we've grouped that. Bring it over here, send it to the back. You know what? I think I want to add a shadow to this rocket ship first. Oh, it's applying it to the individual objects. Oh, that's okay though. I wonder if I ungroup this, if it removes the shadow. Yeah, it does. Okay, so we're gonna do the objects one at a time. At least the drop shadows look good in this program. That's cool. This quick shadow is. Quick shadow. Ooh, no. <laughs> do not like that quick shadow. It's quick, but don't look good. Here we go. And should we do a shadow on the body? Why not? Let's do it. 
wonder if it can copy the style of a shadow. Okay, that's good enough. So let's group this all again as one object. There it is. So we are going to group this. Okay, our rocket ship is good to go. So we want to have some kind of kind of some smoke coming out, maybe as if it's flying around the planet. That would look cool. Yeah, I think we can do this just with some circles, actually. I wonder if there's any keyboard shortcuts for sending things front and back. Probably is. I don't know what they are, though. Oh, maybe he should be, like, blasting off of this planet. Or should be going around it. I can't decide. Maybe, well, yeah, we'll go around it. That makes more sense. He's exploring space. Found this planet. Probably should keep all these grouped together as I work. and make it easier to keep organized if you could edit the groups, which there might be a way to do. I should, I should mess around with it because I'm trying to learn this thing, but this is just a quick little fun experiment we're doing. You know, this one definitely has to go behind all the other. So actually, we're going to do this in two groups, I think. So this is the main group. Send that to the back. There it is. And we want another group underneath. So that's our main group. So let's lock that main group so we're not accidentally editing it. Now this group here is going to be behind. This small, I think. We should have it kind of fading off in the, as it gets far away in the distance. That feels pretty good. So let's group these as their own objects as well. That. All right, there we go. So um, let's just add a few stars and we're going to call this done. Oh, what happened to my fire? Oh, okay. Oh, it just, there's a little glitch there when I zoomed in. <laughs> as long as that looks good when I'm zoomed out, that's okay. Do they have any star shapes? That would be nice if I didn't have to draw a thousand stars. Oh, they have one. I don't like that star. Oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do like my snowflake style stars. I draw those kind of stars all the time. So we're just going to take a line. Okay, we're going to make these not white, but we'll make them kind of a bluish, like a light blue. We don't want them to compete with the uh, with the lightness on the um, foreground objects. Duplicate this. Duplicate this again. Group that. Can we duplicate the group? Let's see. Duplicate. Oh yeah, we're good. How many stars do you really need? Not that many, I don't think. Make some smaller too. Don't want them to be all uniform. And one more, a little closer to the uh, to the rocket ship over here. All right, that's pretty good. That's the right idea. That's what I was going for. Any other small details I can add, I wonder? Maybe not. Actually, you know what? I just discovered something. You can upload your own images to use in your designs. Now, I don't know if this is allowed for the purpose of what Fun wanted me to do, but check this out. I uploaded an image, so if I go over here, so this is an image that I made in another program, so if I click on it, it puts it into my design here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size of it. See that? And watch this. I'm going to apply a filter to this as an overlay. And look at that. It gives it like a painterly effect. This is exactly the kind of thing I like to do with my illustrations when I'm using other programs. That's why I made this texture. So if you have any kind of textures or painterly kind of stuff that you want to include and start, you know, editing in a little bit more of an illustrative way, just uh, check, check out that feature. That's really, really cool. There we go. We are going to call that done. Let's download the uh, final version of this one. PNG probably would be best. High quality. And there it is. There's my final illustration created with Mako. It really is fun to use. Super easy. So, uh, you know, check it out. There's a link in the description below if you want to uh, try it out for yourself. It's completely free. So enjoy. And that brings us to the end. So that was Mako Fun. They asked me to uh, check it out. They gave me a little incentive. So, you know, if uh, if it looked like something that would be useful to you, check it out. It really was super easy to use. You can create little clip art things super easily. You can save your pictures as PNGs or JPEGs or whatever and be able to use them in your other designs. Um, it looks just like a, a super dead simple layout program. Perfect for, I think its main purpose was for creating mockups. So I think it would be absolutely perfect for that. So, hey, check it out. They're linked in the description below if you want to uh, try it for yourself. While you're down there, <laughs> click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Click the thumbs down button if you just like it. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. And as always, thanks for watching.